Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. Uh Uh, hello, and welcome to the gallery. My name's Yon, and today we'll be painting some skeletons. We're back at it again with Cursed City, and this time around we'll be painting what's Captain Holgrim. And while we're doing that on the side, we'll be painting all the skeleton dudes, because they're sharing a color theme. So let's just jump straight into the painting and see where it takes us. And we'll be painting what's Captain Holgrim this time around. But of course, you can paint all the skeletons in the Cursed City set with this paint method. I'm starting out with a central undercoat that's lined up in this video right here. It's dark color, then a little bit of bone color on top of that, and then a little bit of white on top of that. And we'll be using a lot of contrast paints to begin with. So we're going for the bone and we're using skeleton bone, of course, a skeleton horde. And the main thing here is just find all the bone bits because there are a lot of them, both on him and on all the other guys that are just interspersed in between the armor bits. So just go over the hands, the legs, the torso, see where bone is sticking out. Next, uh, and if it goes anywhere that you don't want to, doesn't really matter that much. We're going to put darker colors later on. Next, we're doing the cloak, and this uh, yellow, mustardy yellow color is from the new contrast paint line, and I really like this one. It uh, flows really well, and it covers really well, but still you get that recess that you already put down with the zenithal, and also it, like regular contrast paints, it goes a little bit into the crevices and does a little bit of work for you. However, like with all contrast paints, and I'm guessing speed paints and many other glazes and shades and stuff like that, once you put it on a big flat surface, leave it to dry completely before you do anything else. Mainly because if you start working it when it's a little bit dry, a little bit starting to dry, it will tear off and it'll streak and it won't look too nice. And we really, really don't want it to go like that. So once you've finished all the yellow bits, or whatever color you choose to have it, in my case it was yellow because I wanted a little bit of extra flair on him, then we're going to do the leather. And the same thing here, now you just have to be a little bit more careful because you've got yellow, you've got bone, you've got different colors here and there. But, and you don't want this brown to seep into those bone colors, into that yellow that you already put down, because if you're gonna do that then you have to paint over it a little bit and then try to put the same paint down again and it won't look too nice I must say so give yourself a little bit of time and then it will look okay just be careful and take your time it's quicker in the long run and I must say I was really dreading when I was painting both the uh, the patch on his eye and the orange hair which I decided to have orange or bright red just to a little bit of more extra oomph on him because I had that striking bone underneath and if one wrong brush move and then I would have orange or dark brown somewhere where I didn't want it so I gave myself a little bit of extra time just to be careful around this bit I mean it is probably simpler to paint the hair first fill in the face and then paint that but it's not quicker and we're going for a little bit of speed here so like I said giving yourself a little bit of time spending the extra minute or two will actually speed up the process for you even though it looks like it's a slow moving thing next uh, we're gonna work a little bit more on those yellow cloaks because they are quite strikingly yellow and not dirty or grimy or well obviously lying on the ground for too long looking so we're putting a little bit of shade and we're just darkening it up and putting something more dark on it and this is quite a lot and we're gonna drag it out we're gonna feather we're gonna work on it a little bit so it looks a little bit more dirty a little bit more grimy a little bit more well interesting and I wouldn't necessarily say real looking because we're obviously having a little bit of a comedic look to this guy with this yellowy orangey look to him but 
still it looks okay once you work on it a little bit and be careful that it doesn't pool here and there that immediately gives it a half hadn't look so drag it out and let it dry completely if you want to you can actually just have it a little bit thinner thin it out with some medium and be a little bit put two coats or one coat if you feel like it and then just some dried bark or whatever brown contrast speed color shade ink you feel like on all the wooden bits there's only the handle basically on this guy also on uh, the other guys it's mainly handle and staff and stuff like that and just put it on and just leave it be i mean it doesn't have to look too grandiose this will be in a pile of other models on the floor so we're going for the cheerleader effect one guy doesn't look maybe too good but ten of them together and they look pretty darn nice now we're done with contrast paints for now and let's start on all the metallic bits i'm going for two tones of metallic on him i'm going for silver and a more coppery gold look just to give it a more regal effect because these are the city guards of a once great city so we're just starting by painting in silver or metallic or whatever color you feel like is necessary or fitting for your guys and I'm just mixing it up I'm putting a little bit of silver on the armor here and there and of course on the weapon and I'm put, then later on and on a chainmail and then later on I'm gonna put in some dark bronze coppery colors here and there just to give it a little bit more accent so it looks somewhat more fun and more dynamic that's the main idea here if it's too much of the one metallic color it will kind of look bland and a little bit flat even though this is potched armor with this and that here and there next it's brass scorpion and that's kind of a muted bronze color brass color of course because of the name and we're putting that over the rest of the metal bits of the accent bits basically it's part of the armor of this guy it's part of the helms on the other guys it's his cuirass it's the hand it's the hilt of the sword just here and there so it looks somewhat more fun somewhat more dynamic like this was not just a hunk of plate mail put on the guy but an actual uh, city armor that the different colors were part of a larger theme that the huge uh, army of the this city had this interesting look to their armor which kind of fits with the helmets of the actual skeletons because they have these strange domed helmets with spikes on it next we're gonna just put a shade over both the silver and the brass and it'll look nice together it'll tie it a little bit more it'll make it look a little bit more old make it like it's sticking uh, been in the ground for years and years probably decades by the look of him and also will like shade does shade it a little bit hence the name and a little bit more on the weapon but don't go overboard like obviously i'm doing here feather it out a little bit so it gathers near the hilt so the edge looks a little bit more shiny because obviously this has been used hopefully not too recently but more likely than not it has Next, after all of this shade is dried, I'm just going over with Nacron Compound and I'm dry brushing both the brass and the silver with it. You get this old look to the brass and it looks a little bit more worn and beaten. And the rest of the armor will look pretty fine as well. You get some easy enough highlights. Be careful when you're dry brushing on fiddly bits like the sword and the halberd end or something like that, that you hold it by the other side so it doesn't break. Next, for a little bit of fun, some blood on the guy. Not too much, just a little bit, so it looks somewhat realistic. After that, we're gonna paint up the base in the same manner we did last time. Video linked up here. And Bob's your uncle, and Fanny's your aunt, and Jeffrey's your cousin. Now, while I painted what's Captain Hulkrim, I also painted some of the skeleton dudes and a little bit of the terrain that felt fitting to go with it. Without further ado, the reveal.
And here we have Watch Captain Holgrim. I put a little bit of extra stuff on his base like I outlined in previous videos and I kind of like this look even though he looks a little bit corny with that yellow cloak and that orange hair I think still it kind of looks fitting on this guy. Now this wouldn't be much of a watch captain if he didn't have the watch to go along with him and that's why while I was painting him I also painted the rest of the watch. and. As a whole, this looks like an interesting squad to go up against, and I kinda like it if I'm honest. Now, thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media, and various tidbits. You do with it what you will. Like, share, and subscribe, and let the colors flow. But until next time, farewell. Yeah.